everybody and welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be starting another reading vlog but this one's kind of going to be a dedicated reading vlog to something that i've been wanting to read for the longest time and that is going to be me reading the vampire diaries by lj smith specifically the awakening and the struggle which are the first and second books in the series i think originally they were sold separately i'm assuming but i've only ever seen them in bind ups like this but this is the only one i could find so this weekend we're reading both of these books honestly expectations are low. I have heard so many bad things about these books. I just love the TV show so much. I felt like at some point in my life I needed to see what the books were like and apparently this is that point in time in my life. So this video is gonna have spoilers for this book and probably the show so if you haven't seen like most of the show I don't know if I'd recommend watching this video but at the same time I feel like you can kind of see where the show is going when you're watching it. So like is it really that big of a spoiler? I don't know but I thought I would just let you know that I will be talking like about the show and about the book because I want to see like how they're different which one is better probably the show for being honest but yeah I'm just really excited to jump into this the goal is to read this this weekend it's like 450 four, 500 pages my god which seems doable honestly so I think it'll be fine yeah let's see plans for today obviously are gonna include reading some of the vampire diaries I don't really expect to get too far in this book today because it's three now and at five my friend Elaine is gonna come over and we're gonna watch the Vampire Diaries so I was like it's a perfect day to start this video because we were gonna watch Vampire Diaries anyway so I was like let's start the book and then we can go watch the show so that'll be really fun so yeah that's kind of everything I think I was needing to tell you so we're just gonna have a fun little weekend reading this um hopefully not too awful <laughs> book and we'll do we'll see where it takes us we'll see how it goes so let's go all right hello all i have read a whopping 12 pages of the vampire diaries so far i just finished chapter one and i wanted to give you some initial thoughts and feelings and what have you so far it's not awful it's honestly like exactly what i expected and right now i'm not really mad about that because i do love a cheesy vampire story and i feel like that's definitely what you get with the vampire diaries i absolutely spend more time laughing at the show than i do any other emotion but it's i just think the book is gonna be like fun i've said this a couple of times before but for the most part i really enjoy like the book versions of tv shows or like movies that i've watched because even if the book's not good i still kind of get to hang out in that world for however long it takes me to read the book which i'm always down for so i just think this is gonna be really fun i also think it's like the perfect time to read this obviously september coming up on spooky season good vampire story. Let's talk about a couple of deviations that they've made so far from the show. First of all, the one thing that really stuck out to me was I didn't realize that they changed the name of the town in the book because in the book, I think it's called Fells Church, but in the show, it's called Mystic Falls. And Mystic Falls, is it called Mystic Falls? Yeah, Mystic Falls is, is am I losing it? I, I'm sorry, I just had a, I don't even know. <laughs> in the show it's called mystic falls which is honestly like in my mind so iconic such a good name like you know some supernatural stuff is gonna go down in that town just from hearing about it and i love that fell's church is lame not into it that's just like the one thing that i was like um actually no but as for characters we've been introduced to a couple of characters first of all obviously elena in the book she's blonde which i was aware of but i most certainly will not be imagining her as blonde she also has a little sister and not a little brother which i'm also not into because i really like jeremy's character then we also have been introduced to stefan and kind of damon stefan was like i don't know killing a rabbit or something as vegetarian vampires do and he said something about how he would look into something's mind so can he like read minds in this book i don't know was this 
the first Edward Cullen. Um, so maybe Stefan was the blueprint for Edward. I don't know. They do give me very similar vibes. I will determine that as I read more of this book. And then one of the only other things I knew about the books was that Damon can turn into a crow, which I feel like they kind of hinted at in the first episode of the show and then they just did absolutely nothing else with it. But Elena noticed this crow. She was like, why is this crow looking at me like it's undressing me with its eyes? And I was like, do you not find that incredibly alarming? Like, just the fact that it's a bird, I don't, I don't know. So I'm just gonna read a little bit more tonight. I'll probably end up updating you tomorrow about how it's going. Yeah, I'm already really enjoying seeing all of the differences between the TV show and the book. And I just think it's gonna be fun which is really all I need right now. Like some supernatural fun times in a book. Like, yes, yes, let's do it. So I will talk to you guys later. It is Saturday morning. So I woke up this morning and I read a little bit more of the Vampire Diaries and then me and Cass did some live sprints where I also read a little bit more of the Vampire Diaries. So I'm up to page 144 and um, I do have uh, I do have some thoughts. So plot wise, I feel like not a lot's gone on. It really is rather similar to the show. You're seeing Elena going back to school. Then she sees this really mysterious guy that wants like nothing to do with her. But Elena in the book is like really pissed about this and she just like cannot fathom the fact that a man is not, you know, falling at her feet. And it's really annoying. But I have I have thoughts about Elena that I will share in a second. But at some point she goes to like a graveyard with her friends and then there's this weird thing out in the graveyard. Honestly, it was kind of spooky because it was like 1 a.m. when I was reading this last night and I was like, I don't like that. But like, it, I'm pretty sure it was just Damon. And then there's like a school dance. She shows up. She wanted to go with Stefan, but obviously that did not happen. Turns out Stefan went with Caroline for what reason I don't really know to be honest because I feel like it has had no impact on the plot really. Maybe it just made Elena mad so she like went off with Tyler and he almost assaulted her in the woods which ew but then Stefan went to save the day which is kind of where the plot has stopped. So I wouldn't say the plot's good. I wouldn't say it's awful but would I recommend this so far to anybody who has not actually watched The Vampire Diaries? Absolutely not. It's bad but <laughs> I get enough entertainment out of it because I've seen the show, but I have some thoughts to share with you guys that I've been writing down in my very cute little pumpkin notepad. Um, got them for 99 cents at Walmart, kind of a deal. First, I thought we could talk about Elena because she's actually the worst. Like, I really don't love Elena in the show. I don't hate her, but she's not my favorite, but I do feel like she's a decent protagonist. But Elena in the book is honestly just awful. She's manipulative. She is annoying. She's rude. She's using Matt to get to Stefan because she just cannot believe that he doesn't, you know, automatically love her after just like looking at her. And I'm like, what? What's wrong with you? We've also been introduced to some other characters. There's a lot of differences in like the characters' names, which I think is just really fun to read about. Bonnie has a different name than what she has in the show. She's also white in the book, which disappointing, but not surprised. The show also just has a lack of diversity. So like not great, but there is a character who does have her last name in the show and that's Vicky Bennett. But in the show, there is a character named Vicky, but it's Matt's little sister, so her name is Vicky Donovan. But there's just like randomly a Vicky Bennett who is, I don't, I don't know what her role in all of this is. I think she just got attacked, which I guess Vicky also gets attacked in the show. But there's also some other names that I think are just so dumb. So first of all, in the show, like I said, Matt's name is Matt Donovan, but in the book, his name is Matt Honeycutt. Would, I mean, it's not awful, but it's just like different. 
a plus for creativity i guess but the one that really gets me is that in the show tyler's name is tyler lockwood but in the book his name is tyler smallwood and i was like why though it's just like why would you consciously like on purpose choose that name for s I, I as i was i don't know but the other thing i want to talk about is the fact that stefan really is the blueprint for edward cullen like you cannot dissuade me on this right now because apparently stefan in the book can indeed read minds and i was like first of all why and also why didn't they keep that in the show but also i feel like they might have taken that out of like one of his powers because the tv show did come out after twilight so i would assume they would probably weren't trying to make it like too obvious even though like the book came out first i don't know literally stefan is 90s edward you can't tell me any different he was walking around the school and he was like oh my god i hear all these voices it's just like overwhelming i was like edward is this remixed twilight i just don't know like i know twilight came out after this book definitely gonna be looking for parallels there because they're very similar which i find very interesting but also definitely makes sense because they're both ya vampire love interests so naturally they're gonna be a little bit similar but like with the mind reading and the broodiness i was like in the vegetarianism i was like like i know they're not actually vegetarians but like you know what i mean um it's just interesting and then also like the last point i want to make here is that i was assuming that in the book stefan and damon would have like very similar backgrounds because in the show they grow up in mystic falls i think they're from like the 1880s sometime in the 19th century i don't know when though but we got a flashback that stefan was remembering where he was talking to his dad and damon and his dad mentioned something about jousting and I was like, what What century are they from in this book? Because I feel like jousting, I'm always like, yeah, 1500s maybe. So I'm, like, I'm assuming they switched like when they're from, but I feel like that just makes the age gap between Elena and Stefan so much worse. And like in books like this, I don't really care about the, like, the age gap because like it's fiction, it's a book, like it doesn't really matter. But 162 versus like 362 462 i'm like eh, it's kind of weird <laughs> so yes like i said i'm on page like 144 um goal is to finish it today but that's like 350 pages so we'll see how that goes but actually i'm gonna go hang out with lane again we're gonna go to spirit of halloween which i'm very excited about and i think i will show you guys because i feel like it kind of it kind of fits the vibe you know we're reading books about vampires we're gonna go to Spirit of Halloween. Like, yeah, so let's do it. <laughs> she literally just told Stefan that she loves him after they've literally been like an item, not even an item, for less than 24 hours. That's some nonsense, what's going on? <laughs> not Elena writing in her diary, like very private, intimate thoughts during trig. All right, good morning, everybody. I'm on my way to get my daily Diet Coke, obviously, but I thought I could quickly give you an update on the Vampire Diaries. So I finished the first book, which is The Awakening. And if I was gonna give it a rating, probably give it like a 2.5 or three, it wasn't great. It wasn't like the worst thing ever though. It really is just like a very basic, supernatural kind of vampire story. Towards the end of the book, I was kind of just like, Meh. Elena found out that Stefan was a vampire. Damon showed up. It was really interesting, however, to hear about their background because as it turns out, they were born in like the late fifth, no, 1400s? Yeah, so that literally makes them like 500 years old. And I'm not saying like that's why I don't like it because that's the case in a lot of like YA books and fantasy books and whatnot. I mean, I think in Akatar, Reese is literally like kind of, it's like kind of that age gap. So I'm kind of like, 
Meh, if I thought that was weird, I'd be a hypocrite, so, I mean, it is kind of weird, but, like, it's also a book, so I'm like, I don't know. But it's just kind of funny. I don't know, I can't imagine Stefan being 500. I don't know, I just feel like 500-year-old vampires wouldn't, like, be going to high school, you know? <laughs> I just... It's just kind of funny, but then you got some background as to what happened between him and Damon because they also have They have like beef in the show. They have beef now. It's still over Catherine, but it turns out that the day after Catherine Like bit him and Damon they killed her even though they did not kill her, but it's just Stefan being annoying He's like, oh my god It was all my fault and I'm like Dude, apparently she just like took off her daylight ring, which some vampires wear so they can like walk out in the sun. But, like not all vampires have daylight rings or whatever, but not the point. Um, she took hers off because she just felt, you know, so bad about what she had done. She'd left them a note. She was like, <laughs> she's like, I can't believe I've done this to you. It's just whatever. I was like, girl, you, I know you do not feel bad about that. I hope Catherine didn't actually die, though. I feel like she didn't. You know, I feel like I really like Catherine in the show. When I first watched it, however, I was like, ew, not Catherine. But now I'm like, she's crazy, but she's also a really good character and just really interesting. But it turns out that Damon and Stefan actually killed each other so that they would, like, turn into a vampire because they have to, like, be bitten and then they have to die. And then they have to, like, go feed on human blood to fully become a vampire so the way that they died is they were dueling you know typical 1400s stuff and they stabbed each other in the heart which i was like wow what a metaphor i guess it was a little heavy-handed but also i was like okay yeah sure so you know damon hates stefan for also stabbing him but i was like how are you gonna get mad when you you stabbed him first, you know? However, I did really enjoy when this book took place because it's like late September to mid-October and I was like, yes. They were talking about like this haunted house that they were setting up for their school on Halloween and all of this stuff took place on Halloween. I was like, this is kind of giving me nostalgic Halloween vibes. I was into, I was really enjoying that aspect of it. But like, aside from that, I don't know. Also, Elena is really just kind of the worst. I feel like she definitely mellowed out after she finally, like, got Stefan in her her grasp. But she was, like, she was awful. I feel like if she hadn't been so atrocious, I may have given this, like, a four stars. But, like, I just don't believe that she's a good person, you know? <laughs> At the very end of the first book, Stefan leaves town for what- Oh, yeah, people think he murdered somebody, which, like, it was kind of a joint effort. Both him and Damon murdered their history teacher. Which, if their history teacher is anything like the history teacher from the first season of the show, I'm like, good riddance. That man was awful, honestly. <laughs> There's this scene in the show, in the first season, where it's like three months after Elena's parents had died, and it was like the first week of school, and she didn't like know an answer to a question or something. He was like, I was willing to be lenient, but now you don't get like a free pass or something. I was like, that's terrible. Why don't you just like say, oh, study more and move on to the next student? I was like, this man is awful. He also bit the dust in the show though, so I was like, deserved, honestly. I don't even remember his name. Not the point, anyway. Um, it's Sunday morning right now. Like I said, I'm gonna go get my Diet Coke. And then I'm going to start and hopefully finish, well, I have to finish the struggle because I'm posting this video literally tomorrow. So there's my update on The Vampire Diaries. One book done. And it wasn't like the worst experience ever. Take, take from that what you will. that really has anything to do with anything but just so you guys know so i have made just a little bit of progress in this book where am i now i think i've read like 10 pages maybe no actually i think i've read like 20 and i'm just like a little bit bored honestly stefan like disappeared at the end of the the last book or the last like part of this book and damon told elena that 
he killed him even though like that's not a thing so like because Stefan's a vampire so like it doesn't really matter i'm kind of bored at the moment but i'm gonna get back into that in a second because i forgot that i got some book related mail that i wanted to show you that i'm really excited about so um yasmin from divine pages and co reached out to me on instagram and asked me if i wanted some bookmarks from her etsy shop and i was like yeah i want some bookmarks <laughs> Um, and I wanted to show them to you guys because actually I already own a bookmark from her and I love it. It's my Akatar bookmark. I thought I would also show you this one because I, like this is, this really is one of my favorite bookmarks. I bought it a couple months ago and I use it in like every fantasy book I read. But she sent me a couple more and I'm so excited about them. So first of all, we have this little whale bookmark. Very cute. Then we also have this butterfly bookmark, which I love so much. I just love the white against this like grayish purplish color and then you have like little constellations you got a little moon i think this one's so cute i love that one and then i also have this one with dragons on it which i will absolutely be using once i start reading throne of glass again i think that'll be perfect and then this other one i actually have in kingdom of the wicked because i started reading this book yesterday and i thought this one fit the vibe perfectly and it's this starless sea bookmark which is my favorite it's so pretty look at the detail on this i'm pretty sure there's a version of the starless sea that has this like stenciled on the edges which i wish i could get my hands on that but unfortunately i don't think that is i don't think they sell it anymore i'm not sure though not that it really matters but i love this one and then also a couple of these are like this velvety kind of texture and they just feel so nice like this one's kind of laminated feeling, but this one's like, it's like those really nice matte book covers, if you know what I'm saying, so. And then she also sent me this little bibliophile sticker, which is also very cute. I just freaking love, like, all of her bookmarks. Big fan. So you guys should definitely go check out her Etsy shop. I will have it linked below if you're interested, so, um, which I would highly recommend. So yeah, thank you so much to, to Yasmin. I was, I was so excited. So now I'm gonna get back into the Vampire Diaries. Motivation is dwindling, but I, I really, really just want to finish this book. So let's get into it. Hello everybody, it is a little bit later. I have decided to go to the library today because I have some studying for an exam that I have on Friday, which is disgusting, but I thought I could give you a little update uh, before I go in, so. I have read like a decent chunk. I'm up to page 359. So what's happened? We met Alaric Saltzman, who is their um, history teacher. And he's kind of a weirdo, honestly. Because in the first day of class, he was like, hey guys, why don't you come over to my place? Their old history teacher got like murdered or whatever. And he was like, we should talk about this. Like come to my place. I was like, um, sir, I don't know about that one. It was just like kind of strange. Aside from that, has anything else happened? Not much to report on, to be honest. Honestly, I might just like finish the rest of it and talk to you then because I don't know, like there's not much else that's going on. However, I do think I'm gonna pick up a few things from the library, so I thought I could also show you that because why not? I love a good library haul, so I thought I could give you one. So yeah, I'm probably gonna leave like five-ish, so I'll talk to you guys then. Hello everybody, it is a little bit later and I'm finally back from the library. I'm so tired and I wasn't even there for that long, but it's fine. Because I did indeed pick up books. I I really can't go to that library without coming back with just like a stack. So I thought I could like quickly show you what they were. Honestly, if they had the next book in the Vampire Diary series, I might have considered picking it up because like, you know, what if I get like a little spurt of inspiration one day and I'm like, yeah, maybe I do want to read some more of it, but maybe that's a sign. I don't know. At any rate, let me show you what I did pick up. First up, we have From the Dust Returned by Ray Bradbury. First of all, look at the cover. Love. With his signature Twilight prose, Ray Bradbury returns to October Country, which that is actually the name of like a short story collection by him, which I freaking love. October Country, the dreamscape he long ago conjured out of autumn nights, full moons, and dry leaves rustling in the wind. Hello? I mean, come on now. Chapter 10 is literally called West of October. Then also one of my holds came in, so I have the seventh volume of Spy Family, even though I I'm not ready to read this one yet. I still need to read volumes five and six. So this this does nothing for me, but I'm glad I have it, I guess. And then I also decided to pick up Pumpkinheads by Rainbow Rowell. I've just seen 
literally everybody probably just about everybody um talk about this when it comes you know to the fall time so i was like yeah i should probably read it at some point so i found it i have it hopefully i can get to it it's a graphic novel so i'd hope so they had like 40 million copies of renegade so i decided to pick one up because i chose it in my tried chapter video that i did recently so i need to read it it's so thick though like how long how long is this it's like 550 pages <gasps> Oh my god, it's 5.52. It's kind of impressive, not gonna lie, that I got it that close. But we have Renegades by Marissa Meyer. I definitely want to read this. And then I've been thinking about reading a book from this author for a really, well, not a really long time. But like, ever since this book came out, I was like, that sounds kind of interesting. And that is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. It takes place in like the 1920s, 1926 Shanghai. And I was like say no more anyway that is the library haul so now it is time to sit down and finish this book i think i have like 140 pages left which is a lot oh i'm just so tired i'm gonna go finish these eat some dinner and then i will get back to you with final thoughts and whatnot so let's do that all right everybody great news i just finished the struggle so it's finally done um it was, I don't know how I feel about this one. It wasn't bad, but the end of it, I was just kind of like, what's going on? You know, like the entirety of the story kind of consisted of Caroline like stealing Elena's journal and Elena had written a bunch of stuff about Stefan that might be like incriminating him. People already think he's a murderer, so it was going to be like a big issue. So they like broke into her house at one point and then like Damon was there. He was like, if you come with me and like rule all of the lesser people <laughs> then i'll help you get the like the diary back and i was like okay sir that might be a bit much but then it was founder's day and caroline was gonna like read it out loud but then turn i don't even know honestly like does the plot matter actually not a lot but it's like towards the end elena saw matt and she was like i need to use your car really quickly and he was like oh i don't know and then she just like took the keys and took his car i was like I don't know why people still talk to her, to be honest. Like, if I had an Elena in my life, I'd be like, actually, I don't know. Like, she's an awful friend. So she took slash stole Matt's car, took it back to the boarding house. Dame was there, so she was like, oh, shoot, I gotta leave. He's like, I don't even know, like, what he was gonna do to her, because I don't think he would have killed her, so I don't know why she was in such a rush, but... I don't know. So she ended up driving. She went to Wickery Bridge because I guess in the books, vampires are afraid of water. I know that was like, or not afraid of it, but like, they, it's something about water. I don't know. But like, they can't be near the water. So she was like, I'm going to drive across this bridge and then he can't get me. But this dumb bitch, she ended up driving off of the bridge. I was like, hot. How do you manage that? So it's just really interesting because in the show, her parents died by driving off of Wickery Bridge on accident, but Stefan like ends up saving her. And in the book, even though like her parents died before all of this happened, Stefan saves her again. So it's really interesting to see like where all of the stuff comes from and how they've kind of adapted it a little bit to like fit it into the show. So that I've really enjoyed. I really like picking up on all that stuff. I think it's, it's fun. But overall, I wouldn't say it was good. It wasn't awful though. Like I was expecting it to be just like so bad, but maybe going in with low expectations was the way to go because I was like, okay. I'd probably give it like a three stars maybe for the second one. It was just like very typical high school supernatural kind of vibe. I would probably consider reading the next one to be honest, not because I thought it was great, but like I said, I do enjoy seeing where the stuff from the show comes from. And I know a couple of things that do go down in the books. I know that Bonnie and Damon, I think, have like a thing. I don't think they're endgame. I think Bonnie and Matt are endgame, which is also very interesting. But even in this show, I'm kind of like, I want to see Bonnie and Damon together, even though it doesn't happen. But if it kind of happens in the book, I'm like, maybe I should, maybe I should see. The only thing that still just really gets me is that Elena is literally the worst main character I've ever read about like in these books. She is awful. I don't know like why LJ Smith or whoever wrote these because they might have been ghost written. I'm not 100% sure. I've seen like stuff online about it, but 
I don't know why they thought that people would like reading about a main character like this because she's literally the worst. I digress. I've talked a lot about it, but she really is. Thank God they made some changes in the show because if this Elena was the main character of the show, I would like be checking out after the first episode. I couldn't do it. It's also just really interesting to think about the fact that these books were written like 18 years before the show came out. And it's kind of very clear that the show was made like after the impact that Twilight had. So seeing how they adapted the show to be more like appealing to Twilight fans is just really interesting because like in the book, Damon and Stefan are like 500 years old and you know edward's like a hundred so they were like we need to make them a little bit younger they also took away some of like the typical vampire stereotype things that were in this book and they also took away like a lot of the powers that they had like at one point stefan literally turned into an eagle i was like what's going on and my last note because i could talk about this for a really long time but i just want to like hit the high points is that damon is just like the worst in these books like i know they try to make him be like the antagonist in the first like season of the show and he is like kind of awful but like it's a funny kind of awful you know like i like damon in the show a lot but if i hadn't seen the show before i read this book i would have been like absolutely not he's a weirdo he's a creep i'm not into it but since i have like the damon from the show while i'm reading this i'm like <laughs> it's just damon even though he's doing some so some questionable stuff, but also like at the end of the book, Stefan just like murdered six people and I was like, oh, so everybody's doing questionable stuff. So I guess that is the end of the video. I'm assuming if you watched this far, you're probably a fan of the Vampire Diary show, or maybe you're not. If not, thanks for sticking around. But if you are a fan of the show, I want to know the obvious question. Stelena or Delena? I definitely have to go with Damon and Elena. I really find Stefan and Elena to be like an awful couple. Like they're just so annoying when they're together. They're just too intense all the time. And I'm like, I can't stand it. But with Damon and Elena, I just feel like they have more chemistry, like in my eyes. But I'd love to know what you guys think. I would also love to know what you guys think about the second half of the show because I feel like it really goes down the hill to be honest. I really love the first three seasons when you have like Catherine and the originals like that's a really good storyline. I really enjoy that arc. I'd love to know what you guys think. I just like talk to me about the Vampire Diaries. I love the Vampire Diaries. I'm trash for it. It is my comfort TV show. So I just I'm so glad I got to spend a whole video talking about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Anyway. I've done way too much talking in this outro, so I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video.